Chad, this is from 2013. This is a show, this is an old sci fi show called Joe Rogan Questions Everything. And in this show, Joe Rogan is it's like a Jesse Ventura type show, it's like a conspiracy show. Um, I find it personally funny though that he is uh, talking about viruses in this one, and uh, you know, it's it's entertaining. So, here you go. Let's talk about Joe Rogan questioning everything. In the former republics of the Soviet Union. The United States probably, when they went over there, they were probably like, what are you guys doing over yes. here with all this shit? There were trenches, huge trenches filled with anthrax. And a little tiny amount of anthrax would kill a person, right? Absolutely. This is very scary stuff. Yes, yes it is. That's why nobody knew about it, and the Soviet Union made all effort to cover it up. That's crazy. Ah, uh, yes. Are those facilities under heavy security? You could walk into those facilities and find biological agents available to almost anyone. <sighs> we were uh, completely confident that the United States did the same and did it better. That's Absolutely. right, America, yeah. There's been a bunch of movies that depict horrific nightmare scenarios where some sort of man-made agent gets released and wreaks havoc and destroys the population. Do you think there's a possibility of that ever happening? Absolutely. They are correct when they describe what might happen upon the release of biological weapons. What's the most frightening biological weapon that you know that was ever developed? One of the most important was the so-called hemorrhagic virus. Hemorrhagic means that they will bleed extensively from your nose, from your eyes, from your stomach. Oh. Sometimes more potent than the smallpox. What can people do to protect themselves if something like this happens, if there is some sort of an outbreak? Very little could be done. In fact, the majority of the exposed people will die. Wow. Yes. Well, um, you just scared the out of me. Congratulations. That was some seriously scary Today, I'm gonna talk to Charles Faddis. He was the head of the CIA's WMD terrorism unit, and he knows what kind of horrifying things are going on. All right, Charles. Joe? What's happening? How scary is bioterrorism, and how much should we really worry about it? The average person thinks there's like some finite amount of this stuff out there, and it's all under control, and that's not even close to true. If more people were really aware of the dangers that are out there, there'd be a lot of folks that were lying awake at night. Okay, so I don't know what this dude's background is, but unless he's like openly and overtly anti-CIA now, if you're a conspiracy guy and you're bringing on like ex-CIA people that aren't like openly anti-CIA, then you're not a conspiracy guy. You're just a State Department operative, okay? You're just a mouthpiece for the American State Department. What diseases specifically are you worried about, and are you worried about engineered diseases that we're not yet aware of? We're worried about a whole host of diseases. What are the big ones that people talk about? Smallpox. We don't hear a lot about it, but there are still stockpiles of it in the world. Right now, the U.S. government is so worried about smallpox that they're stockpiling two million doses of vaccine. There's another disease called tularemia that the Soviets worked with an awful lot. Their idea was knock a country out of commission. In other words, they were gonna infect us with it and tens of millions of people would be hospitalized. That's terrifying. So when I was running the weapons of- You know what's funny about this? COVID literally showed us that like, America has no way of dealing with bioterrorism and that if bioterrorism were to fucking occur, it's over. Like, there is no... It just straight up doesn't matter. Even if fucking naturally a virus makes its way to the United States of America, we literally advocate for the virus. We advocate for more rights for the virus than we do for the people. So, we're fucked. It's GG's. No shot. Like, if the zombie fucking virus actually was a real thing, and someone opened up a gas canister full of the zombie virus, and people were like, die... Republicans unironically would be like, nah, brother, you, you're fucking wrong. You're wrong. My cousin got zombified, but it's okay. He's fine. He's still fine. There's no difference. He was dumb before, too. Y'all lying. It's an international conspiracy to stop me from going to Applebee's. Yeah, it's fine that I got bit, brother, but I'm built differently than my cousin that looks exactly like me. Only the fat motherfuckers can't outrun the zombies. What about my freedom?
government wants us to go to FEMA camps and be defended by the military. Fuck no, brother. Why hasn't someone made a sketch of that? Because it's not funny. How is that not funny? That's hilarious. That's so much funnier than like fucking anti-vaxxer Barbie and shit. It's probably one of the funnier ways of, of uh, uh, dealing with the issue and like covering it from a lib point of view. Mass destruction unit for CIA, right? Our job is to track biological, chemical, nuclear, radiological material worldwide. Every expert I know, every person that's focused on the issue will tell you that the number one threat is biological warfare you know we could have a terrorist group sending operatives here that have been deliberately infected with some kind of disease some kind of pathogen and it could happen tomorrow like a bio martyr type situation exactly you're talking about groups that are willing to use suicide tactics so there is nothing that stops them from then utilizing that fanaticism to deliberately infect somebody and use them as the mechanism for spreading a disease i think the scariest thing about a bio martyr is that you would never see it coming if someone wants to strap a bomb to their chest, there's all sorts of ways they can detect that. But if someone's a biomartyr, there's really nothing. Are you worried about engineered diseases that we're not yet aware of? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, no question. Uh, there's a whole new bio business. And now we get these sort of do-it-yourself labs all over the country with sort of bio entrepreneurs. And folks are playing with engine. Or wait, oh no. Oh no, on accident, on accident, impressed just camming. Like my, my other scene. Okay. Anyway, listen, listen. What's funny about this is that Joe Rogan has become a bio martyr, but he literally is ride or die for COVID. Engineering new organisms, but in the process, potentially creating completely new diseases. So there's a lot of concern about the idea of somebody mucking around with this. And now you have a pathogen released that is brand new and nobody has any resistance to it anywhere on the planet. Would it be even possible to stop something in its tracks? If it's a disease that we haven't seen before or we didn't stockpile anything in advance, you're gonna have a huge death toll before you ever catch up with it. You're gonna find out when the first case gets diagnosed, which probably means at least 48 hours after the attack started, now you realize there was an attack. And by now, everybody that was infected has infected somebody else. So we're already playing catch up. Now you're gonna to try to engineer something while this is already raging, you know, kind of like a wildfire. That's not gonna happen. You're gonna lose a lot of people before you catch up with this thing. There's one thing oh my that God. Charles Fattis mentioned that really kind of freaked me out. He was talking about individuals that are running their own laboratories that may be doing experimentation on bacteria and viruses and might not even realize what kind of danger they're putting the rest of us in. Who are these people and what the hell are they thinking? I need to find out what Tony Kimry knows. He's a journalist who's been investigating rogue experimentation across the country. Hi, Tony, how are you? And he says that it could be taking place right next door to you. This is something that you've been studying for a long time. You're on the cutting edge of this. What is your biggest concern? And effectively, you could come up with a zombie-type virus. Whoa. Coming up, you are a biohacker. What do you do? Is the world going to be wiped out by viruses and plunged into a biopocalypse? I'm talking of Tony Kimmering, and he says that we should be very worried. So this is something that you've been studying for a long time. You're on the cutting edge of this. What is your biggest concern? How do you not immediately have like a million follow-up questions on why this dude looks this way? Like I, I, my, my original inclination is like, okay, no shot. You know, can't take this guy seriously. Get the fuck out of here. No shot. This new threat now is the do-it-yourself biology labs. What exactly are these do-it-yourself labs? Well, it's a global community of uh, citizen scientists, amateur biologists, do-it-yourself bioengineers, and for very little money, you can create your own lab. What is the kind of damage that one of these labs can do? They're dealing with potentially seriously pathogenic materials. They're not regulated. Who knows who's coming and going? And these same resources that are available to the biopunk community are also available to terrorist organizations in rogue states. It's a real threat. Counterterrorism folks will tell you that they believe that the bio threat 
is the biggest one facing us right now. What intelligence do we have as far as how much progress they've made in terms of engineering some sort of a new virus? If you've got the lab, if you've got the scientists necessary, I mean, effectively, you could come up with a zombie-type virus. Whoa. Whoa. You know, something like a rabies virus that's manipulated with something else. So like a 28 days later type scenario. If it's well resourced enough and they're the right people with the right knowledge, then you've got a real problem. So these type of labs have the capability of producing a pandemic virus. There's a lot of classified information out there, but the CIA, they've been following this. They have determined that there are some that have been able to develop some dangerous pathogens from scratch with a hybrid or designer or the next influenza pandemic virus and then spreading it around. That's got the greatest potential for killing a lot of people outside of a, a small tactical nuclear weapon. So someone is going to come along, create some sort of a virus that we really haven't had any exposure to yet, infect someone, they enter into a large population area, and then it spreads. Whoa. If he interviews someone, that literally talks about like in a situation uh, like a um, you know purposely spread bio uh, a purposely spread bio weapon. A lot of media members are probably going to side uh, err on the side of caution, and then there will be a counter movement. You know, there will be a counter movement of free thinkers that will actually end up uh, you know causing irreparable harm to society. I wonder what Joe's take will be on that situation. What would Joe back then think if this there was a man-made, purposely spread bioweapon, right, that compromised American national security? Okay. All right, yeah, here we go. You ready? I met with a guy named Anthony Kimmery, and uh, he is uh, essentially an expert on infectious diseases. And one of the things that he's concerned with is biopunks. They're people who experiment with biological agents. They set up laboratories and they start experimenting with different things. Oh, God. <laughs> right now in some basement, there's some guy with a mohawk fiddling around with the bubonic plague. By the way, a lot of the punks I know, they don't need to order some bacteria or virus. They just need to take their pants off in a bathroom and that spreads <laughs> disease. <laughs> Well, listen, Duncan Charles is the greatest Joe Rogan Carlson. guest. He's a PhD from Goated. Princeton and a bio entrepreneur. And he apparently is going to reassure me mm. that this is not something to be concerned with and that what they're doing is they're trying to create beneficial things. Mm. They're not trying to ruin the world. Right. And what you're going to do is you're going to go to a shelter in Kansas where people are preparing for the, some sort of bio apocalypse. And they have set up this... Refuge. Is this an above ground place? Oh, no, no, no. You're going to go deep into the center of the earth. Really? Yeah. You're going to talk to a PhD from Princeton and you're sending me to an underground cave? Listen, dude, you're going to go to Kansas, you're going to have a good time. And that is the last thing he ever heard. <laughs> I don't know what Duncan is so worried about. I'm sending him to a safe haven, a shelter. I'm the one who has to go to a shady laboratory filled with viruses and bacteria. But the only way to find out what's really going on is if I go look myself. We're about to go into a real live biopunk lab, and inside this lab is Rob Carlson. He has a PhD from Princeton. He's one of the founders of the biopunk movement. Pretty crazy. <laughs> Hi, how are Hi. you? Good. Thank you for meeting us. Really appreciate sure it. Sure thing. Bro, this is why his nipples are grown. A monkey, a monkey with like extremely long nipples attacked him while he was in the lab behind the scenes. You are a biohacker. Sometimes, yeah. Most people, like if you, you tell them I'm involved in the biohacking movement, do they just stare blankly at you? Some do, some raise their eyebrows in Washington, DC. Some get concerned. Uh, what is the concern? If you have biology in a garage, then uh, some people think it's going to go to misuse, maybe. Well, this place has rock solid security. Oh, no, it doesn't. There's wide open doors. What are you doing here? What am I doing here? What, I mean, what is anybody doing here? What's, what's the purpose of this? People come in, they pay a fee, they do their project. You can play with genes, you can play with organisms, and they might be working on anything. 
Just anybody, all they have to do is pay a fee. Do you, do you like do any sort of background check on these folks? Well, I don't know what sort of background check you think that might be appropriate there. But, I don't know. But I mean, do you do a background check when you get a driver's license? Uh, no, you do not. So what he's saying is because you don't need a background check to get a driver's license, you shouldn't need one to run a bike. Wait, that dude is the most libertarian dude I've ever... That dude is the most libertarian dude I've ever seen. Oh my God, dude. I want to know where all of these people are. Also, imagine thinking the fucking... Oh my God, I can't believe I'm... Uh, first of all, I'm 100% in agreement with Joe Rogan and his fears, okay? Um, secondly, we figured out where COVID started, okay? Uh, turns out not in Wuhan. And lastly... What do you mean you can't get a back well, you don't get a background check when you get a driver's license driver's license is the background check it's you know you have a it's your criminal record like what does he think that if you have a dui you could just like get a driver's license for example like there's no you know there is no fucking uh, uh protective mechanism how would we ever stop people who have had their licenses revoked uh because they have duis from going in simply to the DMV and getting another license. Biolab? The last time I checked, you can't start a pandemic apocalyptic zombie virus by commuting. In this case, right, there's some safety training mm -hmm. and people who are responsible for the place are keeping track of what goes on here and they are talking to people and they're looking over people's shoulders. But the security part doesn't bother me so much in this case. Wow. And I'm not the only one doing it. There are a lot of people out there who are trying the same sort of thing. So what's interesting to me about that is that I can make it as every other kind of company in our economy in my garage doing biology. Is there anything dangerous here that we need to be concerned about? In this lab, probably not. Probably is a strange word to use there. Well, there's always a potential for something to happen. You know, cooking in your kitchen, you've got sharp knives around, there's always a potential. So I'm not gonna tell you that it's perfectly safe. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the organisms. It's just being around a laboratory that could be- My controversy- my controversial opinion is that th this dude is CIA uh, as well. Like, I think Joe Rogan just, I guess Joe Rogan questions everything is just Joe Rogan talks to CIA over and over again in different versions. My controversial opinion is that this 100% is a, a front. We're not a front, but like, this is where the government is like tracking people who are coming into that lab to make like, to make good use of Tenorite and fertilizer. You know what I mean? There's no fucking shot potentially slightly dangerous you don't want to lick things you okay. know you no licking wanna, you don't want to eat the stuff that's sitting no on the eating. bench now th there are folks that have some concerns about the whole idea of biohacking manipulating enzymes and bacteria are these concerns unfounded coming up you could potentially do something dangerous here but you could do that anywhere there are lots of There are thousands of people out there working in homemade labs who are toying with potentially dangerous materials. I'm talking to biopunk pioneer Rob Carlson to find out how worried we should be about what they're doing in these labs. There are folks that have some concerns about the whole idea of biohacking, about uh, m manipulating these biologies. Wait, for the record, Someone said this guy doesn't even do the experimentation himself. This is just a WeWorks for literal bathtub meth, dude. Like, he just has a WeWorks for fucking people that want to make bathtub viruses. There's no shot this is still around, by the way, obviously. These enzymes and bacteria, are these concerns unfounded? In a place like this, they're unlikely to have access to or unlikely to be playing with anything that's uh, a potential human pathogen. And I would hope that nobody in a garage or in a space like this does that. This is very scary stuff. So far, he's done nothing to calm my fears of a pandemic. And he is going to give me a tour of a do-it-yourself laboratory so I can see what's going on and whether or not I should be worried. I relish any opportunity to wear goggles and rubber gloves. Now, when you see beakers and labs in L.A., 
downtown, you think meth. Is that a concern? Like, what if someone comes in and they've got a box of cold medicine and they're looking kind of sketch? Presumably, the people who are in charge of any of these spaces are looking out for that. OK. But it's also true that, you know, law enforcement is looking out for that. The last thing we want is to create underground labs where people are playing with biology. How much would it cost to set up a lab like this? A few thousand dollars tops. Mm. Is there anything illegal about this? There's nothing illegal about this. Okay. All right, so what kind of stuff can be done here? In this space, we have uh, art projects, we have uh, a couple startups, and we have people who are just curious, like Joe Biohacker, who is, in fact, in real life, a trained molecular biologist who knows what he's doing, but he hangs out here in this hacker space for projects that he thinks are interesting, and maybe he can't get funded to do at a university, or he's just doing for the fun of it. That's just... Uh... Okay. That's very weird, dude. Uh, that's really fucking weird, dude. That's like, I remember another, I remember another fucking, you know, university professor who uh, wanted to do his own projects outside of the university. He went to a cabin to do some biohacking, famously. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah. He was like, I'm going to do some biohacking. Wild scientist style. Woo. <laughs> See when he throws those little plastic caps over his shoulders? That's the scientist version of doing a burnout in a parking lot. Totally unnecessary, but looks cool. Now the real concern amongst people who are looking at these labs is biology being manipulated to the point of becoming a weapon, whether it's uh, some sort of a new disease or some sort of a combination of diseases. Is that of any concern in any of these laboratories across the country like this? What they're doing here, it's very straightforward. You could also potentially do something dangerous here. Gotta be honest about that. But you could do that anywhere. You need a table and a sink, and that's a laboratory. So the notion that we could actually prevent people from doing harm by closing down labs like this, stopping people from working like this, is uh, not workable. It's the drug story all over again. So if we outlaw tables and sinks, only outlaws will have tables and sinks. That's exactly right. You know, the way, the only way you can actually outlaw producing drugs is to outlaw chemistry. Okay. Not gonna happen. If you came in off the street, you brought all the raw materials with you, you could potentially do something bad here. Between new emer- Dude, I love libertarians. They're so awesome. Emerging diseases and mankind's manipulation of viruses, our world might be headed for a biopocalypse. I just hope that Duncan's found a nice safe spot for us to ride out the viral winter if a biopocalypse does occur. I'm in the middle of Kansas driving to one of the largest bomb shelters in America. Vivos. This used to be a storage facility for the United States military, but it has now been converted into a place that can withstand a biopocalypse or any other gigantic <clears throat> catastrophe. Oh, no one's here. Great. I don't feel safe. Hello! I'm dying! This is what happens if you're friends with Joe Rogan. What a wonderful place to spend the end of the world. Thanks, Joe. On the other hand, I know where I can come if the hits the fan. Duncan, Robert Ficino, welcome to Vivos. Thanks. What is this place? It's the world's largest private shelter. It's carved under a limestone mountain in the late 1880s. So this thing has already been here 120 years, withstanding the test of time. Wow. Wait, what and the now fuck? It's here for what reason? We're converting it to a private shelter for our members that they may come here. Wait, in the 1880s, what the fuck? Also, why is Louis C.K. working at the fucking private shelter? When did Louis C.K. become the operator of a private shelter? Here, at the moment of truth, be that a viral pandemic or nuclear or whatever it is, we'll survive underground here for a minimum of one year without having to return to the surface. You have a year's worth of food here. 
A year's worth of freeze-dried neats. We have a hydroponics area. This is another area for aquaponics. And then we have food storage here. So, so this is completely self-sustaining. Yeah, this facility could continue on indefinitely. We have a nuclear blast-proof door that'll withstand a 20 megaton blast. 20 megaton. What about germs? What about viruses? Right behind that door, we have another set of doors that are airtight, pressure tight, and watertight. Nothing gets in. In fact, no water. For we could be submerged under several hundred feet of water, and it won't come in. But this doesn't look to me like a regular bomb shelter. Here, you've got a wine bar, hot tubs. You have hot tubs in this bomb shelter. We are trying to make it as comfortable as possible, including your own RV. We don't actually build out apartments or bedrooms or suites or anything. Mm. People drive their recreational vehicles directly in through the blast doors and park. How soon do you think something like this? Oh, my God. Oh, dude, they're all going to die when one of them fucking leaves his RV on. That's it. It's like a libertarian is going to be like, hold on, brother. You can't fucking stop me. No regulations in the, in the libertarian utopia here. You can't regulate me from stopping my RV in, a, in this closed space. The hell is this? This is the nanny state. And then he just gives everyone carbon monoxide poisoning. Awesome. That's right, dude. No rules, baby. You got the freedom not to breathe my carbon monoxide. Go outside. It could happen. It could have happened five minutes ago. We don't know. But here's what I do know that I got a place to go. Right. While seven other billion people on the planet do not. Can you walk me through what a viral pandemic might look like? People that aren't prepared have to look forward to hell on earth. It will be ugly out there. You know, I've had people say, why would you want to survive? The world's going to be devastated. It's going to be terrible. Well, the one good thing about a pandemic is maybe it only affects human genes and humans. It doesn't affect animals, doesn't affect nature, the water, the sky. Everything else is pristine. So to say that we're going to go out to something that's terrible, the earth has been scorched and it's ugly and why would you ever want to live, isn't true. You know, why wouldn't you want to be a part of the next rebirthing of the earth? I've been hearing about these biopunks who have started their own laboratories and are altering viruses. Are you worried about them starting up some kind of global pandemic? Absolutely. There's not only that threat, there's, there's dozens of threats. And to not believe it is naive. Who has the f You know every single person with a Vivo subscription or whatever the fuck is also unvaccinated. They think it, the China virus was a Chinese bioweapon but they also simultaneously hold the same belief in their brains where they think it's both simultaneously a bioweapon, but also they will survive. Final say. Uh, the shelter director. You. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. I, at this point, I am. And you'd be willing to shoot people to keep them out. We'll be willing to protect the facility to save our members. Coming up, this place is operated tight. So horny to fire shots. Between new emerging diseases and mankind's manipulation of viruses, our world... What the fuck is a bioeconomy? It sounds like bullshit just used examples of other types of economy as evidence of biotechnology will create a new economic system, but the key I found that makes them... What is this? What? Who are you talking to? Okay, let's continue. World might be headed for a biopocalypse. I just hope that Duncan's found a nice safe spot for us to ride out the viral winter if a biopocalypse does occur. I got a place to go. Right. While seven other billion people on the planet do not. Who has the final say? Uh, the shelter director. You. Maybe. Maybe I'm not. I, at this point, I am. And you'd be willing to shoot people to keep them out. This place is operated tight hmm. because it has to be. If it isn't, you're going to have chaos. This is amazing. Can you take me on a tour of Vivos? You ready? Yeah, let's, let's see go. it. Where's the wine bar? Let's go exploring. Let's do it. Wait, they're driving cars around <clears throat> in this like garage, basically. That's kind of odd. So we're cruising along inside underground cave mountain it's the uh, same square footage as the empire state building wow America. how many people will eventually live in this place well we're planning 5,000 could be a little more 
but quite frankly, we could even double that. You know, the, the thought is this. These people may very well be oh, the they next have an Genesis system. to restart this planet. Effectively, this facility is a Noah's Ark. Wow. Check, check. Check, check, check. All right, ready? So what did you think about the underground shelter? This, it was definitely the creepiest place I've ever been in my life. We ended up driving into a hole in the side of a mountain in this massive limestone quarry with a man who compares himself with Noah and says that this place is going to be a new ark. They call it the new Genesis. I love Joe Rogan's facial expressions thinking about like how ridiculous some of these like kooky can some of these kooky conspiracy theorists are. When like, you know, he is that guy in, in the most meaningful way possible, perhaps. Uh, he's quite literally that dude. Where it gets really weird is you ask him like, well, who's running this thing? Like who gets to make the decision? Thanks, Mr. X for ruining my Tuesday night. I got pizza, snackies, and a Coke in a fridge. Took a day off from work and you saw it was more important to power game and play 11 hours after you went offline. Thanks for nothing. After today, I'm not a juicer anymore. What? Someone, I wonder if someone wrote that originally. Like, that's copy pasta, sure. But, like, I, I wonder if someone actually wrote that unironically at first. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, we'll, we'll see about that. But you know who's making the decisions. Him. Yeah, him. So he'll be king of the world. He is going to spawn. The one problem with the He's whole a, thing is that a... all that was down there was like five RVs. They hadn't developed much of it at all. The wine bar wasn't there, the hot tubs weren't there, the nightclub wasn't there. It was mostly just an underground cave that hadn't been developed yet. This ex guy, I can't believe him. I skipped a funeral, wedding, party, concert, business meetings to be there. I will be contacting my lawyers effective immediately for CB not having the utilities to wake him up. I am also in contact with CG, and they have promised to do what you guys can't. I'll see you in court. What the fuck? So, if something awful happened right now, and you'd bought space in there, you'd pretty much just be going to live in a cave. What if a worldwide plague does break out, and you had the choice between uh -oh. being on the outside and risking your life, most likely dying, or living with these guys in a hole in the ground? What would you choose? Oh. Tie me to the telephone pole and let the vultures eat my eyeballs out. <laughs> I don't want to live in that underground RV park. I'd rather get eaten by wild, ravenous dogs. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying to think that if you wanted to turn humanity into a bunch of raging hemorrhagic maniacs, all you would need is one drop of the right deadly bug. It's a horrifying thing. I'm gonna to talk to Dr. Brad Spellberg from the Harbor UCLA Medical Center. He's an infectious disease specialist, and he's gonna tell us where the real danger is. First of all, thank you very much for doing this. He's gonna be like, you know, there's this thing called the coronavirus. At this stage, the they coronavirus obviously exists. Like, that's a real, real tough one, you know, when you think about it. Especially if, uh, you know, there was a new one. Like the prior SARS. You bet. Now, knowing what you know, and being an expert at this, what scares you the most? The most terrifying thing that I am seeing is bacteria that we can't treat with antibiotics anymore, that have set medicine back 80 years, and patients are dying of those infections already. These totally resistant bacteria that are in hospitals and nursing homes are now spreading in communities and killing people, and we can't stop it. Did you see World War Z? I have not seen it yet. The concept behind the movie is that there's a disease, and this disease turns people into zombies. Uh, some rabies-like form of a disease. Dude, he's literally talking to an infectious disease expert, like, and he's like, yo, have you seen the zombie movie? I love his brain, dude. How can you not love this man? I mean, seriously, like, this is what I, I wish Joe Rogan was back to this shit, okay? Because his mind is so awesome turns people into mad dogs. Is that possible? One of the scariest things about being in infectious diseases is that every few years, something pops out and you go, oh my God, how did we not know about that? So, you know, HIV popped out in, 19, in the early 1980s. Where was that before, right? SARS, monkeypox. He really is, he really easily actually, he's like every other boring jock man, really not interesting. 
I mean, I, I do. I, I like boring jock guys, dude. I, I, I'm friends with a lot of fucking boring jock guys. Curiosity inherently is not a bad thing. Like, someone in the chat said, yeah, he used to be like XQC and now he's like Greek God X. That nails it. Okay? That nails it. He did say SARS. Uh-oh. Hold on. What? 80s. Where was that before, right? SARS. Monkeypox. You know, we have this Middle East coronavirus now that's killing 50% of people it infects. And it just popped up in the last year or two. That's one entirely feasible doomsday scenario that a lot of people are... Motherfucker pre watch dude. Yo! I mean, of course he was going to say that. Of course he was going to say that. Coronaviruses are not new. Like, it's just not. COVID is not new. Hassle. Uh, as a matter of fact, all those fucking cattle ranchers that ironically are now anti-vaxxers quite literally have had a vaccine for coronavirus for a very long time because it's something that impacts uh, their cattle. Really worried about happening right now. See, we think we rule the planet. No, microbes. They rule the planet. They formed the atmosphere of the planet. They've been around for three and a half billion years. They formed the atmosphere? Yeah. They live at the bottom of the ocean. They've been found alive a mile down the Earth's surface in solid rock. No matter what we throw at them, we will never win the war against microbes. It's not winnable. We have to keep a pace. We're on a treadmill. There's no end game. Wow, that's a fascinating way to look at it. So we have to keep our endurance and we have to constantly throw attention and money at this in order to just keep the population alive. Absolutely, and in fact, microbes are the most adaptable things on the planet. The future of humanity and microbes will- Why is Joe Rogan not debating this guy with his boulder full of Facebook memes though? That's kind of weird. Yo. Here he has a disease expert and he's just taking him at his word. Like, does he not realize this man is compromised? Does he not realize that this man is probably spreading, uh, purposely spreading misinformation? Like, well, what's next? Is he going to say everyone should get vaccinated against viruses that are, you know, potentially killing people and that like uh the worst thing we could do is spread anti-vaccine rhetoric in it's a situation like that Two months and over where's the folder joe where's the where's the conservative um, facebook meme folder likely evolve as episodes of our wits versus their genes they're still using their genes to adapt and the scary thing is <laughs> so saying, despite the title of the show he's not questioning that professor at all yeah it seems like joe rogan's not questioning everything stop using our wits to keep up and that's why we're having this antibiotic superbug problem right now you know each time you go back to the well you got to come up with the next generation thing it's getting harder and harder to do that the low-hanging fruit is plucked what an incredibly complex problem because on, on one hand, you have this, these organisms that are essential for life, can live in these insane environments that other life forms can't exist in, and yet, they also kill us. You know, people say to me, how far away are we from the iceberg? The ship has hit the iceberg. If these bugs spread, which they may well, that's when the lifeboats go under and we all drown. Coming up, I found what I thought was- Dude, look at his face, dude. This is just, he's constantly perplexed. I love this. I love, like, he looking like an NFT right here, okay? Travel across my eyeballs, body. Started in any of the countless labs sprinkled across the world, but even without human intervention, these tiny mutating microbes keep finding ways to adapt and thrive. They continue to resist medication and figure out ways to spread. How in trouble are we? It's very spooky talking to these guys about diseases and the potential for some sort of a gigantic worldwide pandemic. I never thought it was a real possibility. I never really considered it. It is terrifying to think that there are new diseases and mutations sprouting up on a daily basis. Yeah, just so terrifying. This is very scary stuff. I just drop kicked my TV in front of 30 guests at my party because of XQC. My wife just took our crying kids and said they're all spending the week at the hotel. XQC has ruined my life and my party. I can't handle this anymore. Goodbye, XQC. I'm now a Buddha fan. Have you heard of more Jones? Yeah, I've heard of it. For folks who haven't, I've posted a bunch of research about it at sci-fi.com. It is some sort of a new phenomenon that many people dismiss, including legitimate doctors. I've talked to a legitimate doctor in the field of bioweapons, and I said, what do you know about Morgellons? He's like, oh, Morgellons. Ah, oh, you know, a lot of those people are crazy. Now, these, I've talked to some of these folks that have this disease. 
And it's not all crazy people. We got a hold of this video of this woman, and she needs help, and she doesn't want her identity revealed. Just check this out. Wait, what? Hi, Joe. I've had a disease they call Morgellons for about 15 years now. Strange fibers that aren't able to be identified come out of my body, and I sure would like to have some help finding out what they are. I've got a little... Wait, what the fuck? Wait, what, what, it, wait, what is it? What the fuck is it? People are saying it's not a real disease. This is a fake disease. It's Havana syndrome. It's the same thing. It's delusional, delustional parasitosis. A controversial condition involving... I fucking... I, I see it, bro. I, I mean, thank you. I'm looking at it too over here, okay? A controversial condition involving skin lesions. Look at the chatter. Actually, that is nice that you Googled it and posted it in here. Thank you. Kisses for all my good chatters. That's actually a good chatter. I should not make fun of that. He's just doing a good thing. Um, yeah, and then this is a bad chatter. See? Look at that. That's, I would much rather have chatters like you, chatter, who Googled it and put, copied and pasted it instead of this fucking chat. It was like, it's called Ligma. The condition is relatively uncommon and the cause isn't fully understood. Testing for infection by bacteria and parasites is usually negative. Symptoms include skin rashes, a sense of intense itching and crawling under the skin and fatigue. There's no single established cure for Morgellons disease, but a regular follow-up with a physician along with treatment of any associated conditions such as anxiety or depression may help. So like, so what, do you can't see the parasites? Wait, what are the particles emerging from the skin sores then? Delusional infestation and treated with the cognitive behavioral therapy? Oh, they don't see it? It's not real? The sores are typically the result of compulsive scratching in the fibers when analyzed are consistently found to have been or for or have been originated from cotton and other textiles. Oh, my mom claimed to have it. You should have seen all of the Alex Jones supplements that my stepdad threw at it. Is your mom an anti-vaxxer now? Wait, hold on. I'm going to say image, Mergellin's disease images. Pictures, treatment, symptoms. Warning, graphic imagery. People who have Morgellons disease may develop slow healing ulcers on their skin. Wait, what the fuck? How did this person get like these crazy ulcers? A hallmark of Morgellons disease is the appearance of fibers underneath or protruding from the skin. Wait, there's no shot. Be careful, but on the first Google page. This is from Medical News Today, okay? This website seems incredibly, incredibly suspicious. Because I looked at the... Uh, I'm going to click on this. It's not that graphic. That disease is not real. That's exactly how the arms of people who use meth in jail look like. No cap. The disease is believing you have the condition. The reason sores don't heal is because they keep scratching. Look up Morgellons and Lyme disease. Wait, is, is, wait, is Lyme disease fake? No, that's like, you get it from a tick, don't you? Lyme disease is real. What the fuck? Is Lyme disease fake? While there's general agreement on the optimal treatment from Lyme disease, the existence of chronic Lyme is generally rejected because there's no evidence of its existence. Oh, so chronic Lyme disease is not real. Some people make fun of chronic Lyme because it's primarily psychiatric symptoms. No, I thought Lyme disease is real. Lyme disease is real. Look, Lyme disease, what's actually going on here? Person in an area populated by the Lyxidase scapularis tick is bitten and picks up a spiral shape Borrelia Bergdorferi bacterium for the bite. Most people will then develop a target-shaped rash around the bite, known as erythema migrans. Lyme disease. Oh my god, it just yeah. sounds fake. It like it literally all of it sounds fake, dude. But I know it's not. I know this is not fake. I'm just saying using Latin for diagnoses, like for medical diagnoses, just makes it sound so fake to me. Because I'm a fucking idiot. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying the Lyme disease is fake. I know Lyme disease is real. Uh, as real as the top of the hour ad break for sure. You know what I mean? That comes at the top of every hour. Uh, obviously, if you're a part of the Vivos shelters, that's included. Uh, your your uh, subscription will be included in the Vivos uh, shelter package. But if you're not a part of the Vivos membership, uh, where you are aware of uh, you know the top of the hours and and how to avoid them. I already read this. It's just like fucking weird. And they say that it's not real. Anyway, um, if you no longer want to see those ads, like I said, you can subscribe for $5 or for free. Now we're going to continue on with Joe Rogan questions everything. As long as you don't question the top of the hour ad break, you're good. Here's the ad break now. Little handheld microscope and I can show you a picture of what's on my skin. This is a typical fiber that we have. Oh, there's a black one. Oh, and there's one of those long ones. The stuff that's actually on my hand is like a callus. Joe, 
I'm gonna give you all the slides that I've, I've kept for so long and please just look at it. And not just for me, but for a whole community of people that are being knocked out. Of okay, this is mass hysteria, okay, straight up. I'm sorry, when I saw this, when I see people being like, I got the documents, look at my illness, I'm like, nope, no shot. She's just tweaking, bro, what the fuck? Of society. Morgellons is another example of strange things that can happen to the human body. Is Morgellons one of those mutations that Dr. Spellberg warned me about? Whatever it is, this creepy condition, disease, is affecting more and more people every day. One of them is Dr. Greg Smith, who not only studies Morgellons, but actually has it. Dr. Smith may seem a little unusual, but oh. what he has to say is really odd. Bro, this is literally like, dog, this is literally the origins of why Joe Rogan is the way he is. <laughs> Public knowledge about this disease is, needs to just continue to be expanded. How is it? Do you my favorite thing is like when these dudes are like, COVID is fake, but my other disease, that's real. That's very real. COVID, on the other hand, fake. <laughs> like the real diseases are fake, but the fake ones are real. As you had it. Very I found real. what I thought were cactus spines in my arms, but... They don't really look like cactus bites. As a physician, I studied all the anatomy and the physiology of the skin, and this wasn't normal at all. Like, what kind of odd stuff was happening? We were seeing these odd fibers in our skin, as well as other unusual things. I don't know what those things are. I don't know what they were. But I happened to Bro, get that dude, okay, see? This is when, <laughs> this is Joe Rogan's buddy of mine collection. Bro, when you fucking talk to a guy who's like, I'm a doctor, and then that's what he's doing it, when he's like tweaking like that, you just gotta be like, all right, bro, like, are you a fucking doctor of meth? Like, are you, are you the doctor of doing meth? What's going on? Because you're tweaking right now. I'm not a doctor, but I can, I can tell. I can tell that you're not just a quirked up white boy, okay, who's goaded on the sauce. Busting it down sexual style, okay? I gotta stop saying that. It's already done. That, that meme is already over. One of these little specks in my eye. Okay, so I took my glasses off, went in and looked at my eye, and this was totally the most bizarre thing I've ever seen in my life. That piece of fluff traveled across my eyeball. It hurt like a son of a gun as it went across the cornea and then started digging in right on the edge. And if you can see that scar there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got Margiela disease. The drip on me is insane. The drip on me is insane. Mason got me looking sussy. That's right, brother. Damn, dude. Yeah, I do see a scar. Did you see it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, in your eyeball itself. Top of the eyeball, right. Yeah. So you had this Morgellons lesion in your eyeball itself. What it was was a little fluff ball. It's really little tiny balls of fibers intertwined together. Uh-huh. Something's got to be stimulating the body to cause this. Right. There is a significant amount of not just neurological, but psychiatric symptoms from this disorder. And that's hard for people who are not medical and who are sick and whose brain is not working well. Bro, even his hands, like, he's just straight tweaking, bro. Look at this. And that's hard for Look. people who are not medical and who are sick and whose brain... Like, that is not, you know... Like, either he has another illness, he's just straight tweaking. Like, that's... Your hands don't do that, okay? Normally, when you're speaking, you don't... Your hands don't fucking contract like that. Put on his board Brain member's plaque. Brain is not working well because they've got the Morgellons. And it probably supports the idea that it's a psychosomatic illness, or at of least it clouds does. the waters. It, it clouds the waters big time. What are your theories about the origins <coughs> of this disease? Do you oh! Have a theory Joe, get away! <laughs> Joe, get out of there, you fucking dingus! He just coughed on you! The recent, doctor, by the way, doctor about? of diseases, by the way, just straight coughs directly in his direction. The origins <laughs> of this disease. <laughs> Look at the camera cut on that. Joe, throw the kitchen sink. He, he leans in closer. You have a theory yourself? The research that has been done most recently, the last couple of years, about Morgellons shows that these systemic symptoms are related to Lyme disease. I think this Morgellons is probably something else along with it that causes the funky fibers. So Lyme disease, a disease that compromises the immune system, might leave you susceptible to this? So far, the vast majority of patients who have Morgellons, when tested appropriately, will also be found to have Lyme disease. It completely makes sense that you're dealing with something that's an undiagnosed... It, it's, it's something that's really new, it's funky. 
You've helped us quite a bit. Thank you very much. Oh my God. I feel bad for Dr. He literally cut the conversation short. Greg Smith, if I thought I had fibers crawling across my eyeballs, I think I'd be suffering too. So we need to find out what exactly is this. Oh, he's a pediatrician? Oh God. Really? He's a pediatrician? Bro, I would not, I'm sorry, like, I would not trust children around this man, okay? That's crazy. It's Morgellons disease, and is it a part of this biopocalypse that we keep hearing about? We had a podcast listener that sent us some samples of things that she had pulled from her body, and we're going to bring them to SEAL Labs and see if we can get some answers. Yeah, they're going to say it's like regular, uh, regular, regular fiber. Morgellons? Somewhat familiar. But you've obviously seen a lot of different things under microscopes. Oh, correct. Basically, what I do is forensic analysis, dealing with materials. So you have a, at least a reasonable idea of whether something's biological. Non-biological. Non-biological non fiber. Sure. That supposedly came from a woman's body. So we're going to open it now for the first time. Bro. <laughs> Yo, they sent it in a manila envelope, bro. <laughs> Yo, here's my body fibers, Joe. I'm gonna send it to you in this in this yellow envelope. No gloves, by the way. No gloves, just touching it. Touching someone's gross ass body fiber. Taken out of this woman. Check that out. Still sealed. Still sealed. Want to go ahead and open it up? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, crusties. Hmm. So over here, we're at 50X. There are several objects. What we can do is kind of first look around, see what we see, if there's anything that stands out. On first glance, what, what does this look like to you? There's some fibers yeah. out there. Um, does it look like hair? I mean, what is it? What does it look like plastic, if you had to guess? Usually hair leaves certain indentations um, as it's growing. Sort of like, almost like bark, right? Bark, and um, this one this one looks very smooth. Very almost. uniform. Very uniform. Wow, that's really weird. Let's see what we got here. That looks very different. They find out it's a Dorito piece, and Joe eats it. Heads up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, it's great, man. I was looking for this one. And when you look at it, oh, it's here, Cool Ranch. It's almost like some type of. As a person who picks at their skin due to OCD, it's incredibly easy to get fibers uh, uh, suck in open wounds. Yeah, I agree. I am a huge picker. I, I, I do it too. I mean, uh, it's the same as you know, chewing my fucking fingernails and cuticles and shit. Coloring on there. Very different from the other sample. Very different. Okay, what the hell is that? That? I have no clue. <laughs> oh, dude, this is like, see, this is not damaging. This is like weird, dumbass conspiracy shit that like ultimately isn't as damaging as like totally fucking advocating against. Uh, taking public safety measures uh, during a, a pandemic that's killed like a million people. You know what I mean? Like that's in America alone. This stuff is like fun. Okay. It's like, it's like flat earth shit. It's like fun and wacky. A podcast listener claims that she is suffering from the odd and controversial disease called Morgellons, where strange fibers supposedly grow out of your skin. She sent us some samples, and we have brought them to a laboratory to see if we can get some explanations. Okay, what the hell is that? That? I have no clue. I wouldn't be able to tell you what it is without further analysis, but <sighs> we can go into the scanning electron microscope. We would have better focus. We can okay. actually analyze it and probably give you like what it consists of. Okay, sounds good. Elemental wise. Good. 
If he doesn't know what he's looking at, I sure as hell don't. So we're gonna have to look at this in a more powerful microscope, a scanning electron microscope that can magnify up to 100,000 times. And hopefully it'll shed some light on what was sent to me. Do you ever think that when you're working here alone that maybe there could be an accident and you could develop superpowers? <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Mm, I would, that's all I would think about. <laughs> Wow, so what are we looking at here? Like, this is uh, what magnification? Right now it's 290, and I'm making a couple of adjustments. This is 1600X. Wow. Hmm. About 100,000X. What a bunch of creepy looking things. Wow, I've seen that before. Look at this right here. What does that look like These. to you? These look um, like diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth. What is diatomaceous earth? Like ocean life that has been dead for eons. They use it for swimming pool filters, organic pesticide for plants. Yeah, it, it looks like little sponges or filters. Right, right. So uh, is it possible that that's human skin? No. It, it is organic, it's just not um, human. So it's not from a human body, definitely? Right. There, there's nothing to indicate that this came out of a human. Wow. So what exactly is Morgellons? I'm convinced that Morgellons is a real disease, but I'm also pretty convinced that it's probably not going to be the start of the biopocalypse. Well, thank you very much. This has been uh, very illuminating. Sure. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's very fascinating machinery you got here. Here's what I learned in my journey. Our bodies are not just an individual organism. We are an ecosystem of literally trillions of organisms. <laughs> <That's what laughs> the editing dude i love this i love the show i need more of this show is there more of the show by the way uh how does it not like ring a million alarm bells in your fucking mind when your fucking podcast fan base is sending you like crusties okay in the mail joe rogan's p.o box is a nightmare dude Absolute nightmare. The base Bigfoot episode, he talks about it a lot. Should we watch this? Dude, I'm learning so much. Makes a biopocalypse possible. When you talk to people that are in the know, they'll tell you the biggest threat to mankind isn't nuclear war or terrorism, but it's biology itself. The smartest minds in the world literally have no idea what's coming down. As soon as they come up with a cure, the bugs mutate and find their way around it. The bottom line is that this is a war that will never be won. We just have to hope that we win more battles than the bugs do. Yeah, except like now he's like a vaccine skeptic. Like he's literally, he went from like, ringing the alarm bells against any kind of like meaningful uh, uh bioweapon or just I, I mean even back then his angle was like it's a bioweapon like if it's it's not like in nature right the area where he searches for bigfoot is where i go hiking all the time there's a crazy good burger place right where he's interviewing one of the bigfoot experts this is very scary stuff hey if you like this video please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos <laughs>